Dead Island is a first-person shooter, action, adventure, open-world exploration, zombie, survival, horror, RPG. Yeah, it's, it's kind of all those things. A jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of game that excels in many areas and falls a little short in some others. Welcome to completion number 18 of the Potato Backlog Project. Stick around to the end of the video for the Tater Raider, and let's talk about Dead Island Definitive Edition. Originally released in 2011 on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Windows, the game was re-released as a remaster of sorts in the Definitive Edition with all the DLC and extras in 2016. This version is still available to purchase and play on Steam and current gen consoles. The setting and story of the game starts you off on this like island resort where you're at a party and all of a sudden things go crazy. Within a few minutes, a zombie outbreak hits and you wake up in a hotel after a crazy bender and start exploring and figuring out what's going on. The character's story and writing all worked for me here. It's very cheesy and janky. It kind of leans into all the tropes and over the top kind of stuff you would see in cheesy old zombie flicks. From the main quest story arc to the side quests and all the characters you meet in between. The world was funny to me and enjoyable, like finding the one crazy party girl whose only care and concern in the middle of the zombie apocalypse is getting the best champagne to drink. You mix stuff like that with the stuff that's kind of serious in the overall main story arc and it all comes together nicely. Gameplay wise, there was a ton more depth than I was originally expecting going into the game. There are essentially four classes of characters. Each character has their own backstory, starting stats, and skill trees to explore. You level up your character through experience points, which are gained by completing quests and killing bad guys throughout the world. The first half of the game concentrates mostly on melee weapons and survival. It's cool how you basically find and use all the stuff around the island to fight your way from place to place, furthering the main quests and opening up side quests as you go along. Weapons have durability, but you eventually find repair stations for them so you can keep the ones you like. The repair stations also open up ways to upgrade those weapons for more damage and also add mods to them like poison, toxic, electric, and fire damage. You'll find blueprints around the world to open up the different modding options and crafting abilities, which was nice as it encouraged a little extra world exploration that would actually affect the gameplay for you outside of exploring for the standard collectibles that you check off a list. I had a lot of fun experimenting with the mods to find things that I liked and what would be effective for me, and visually they help spice up the experience as well. Every time you level up your character, you're also given a skill point to unlock something on one of your skill trees. The character I chose had a lot of passive abilities that I chose to go for first. What you unlock and when will be entirely up to you and the way that you like playing. For example, I didn't even unlock the ability to stop zombies on the head till like halfway through the game. Same with the Fury Blood Rage skills because I played a very ranged style most of the game. Others might be on the lookout for more in-your-face rushdown type options and there's also a character that excels in ammunition and guns and all that crazy stuff as well. There's a nice variety for players depending on how you want to play the game. The enemy variety was good enough that it always seemed to keep you on your toes as far as zombie variety can go. You had the classic slow but powerful zombies, the jobber type zombies just there to annoy you and die, the super angry fast runner zombies, bloaters, and even the zombies that would throw and spit stuff at you. The one enemy type that I wasn't a huge fan of was the actual people with guns when they're introduced to the game. You're brought along for about half the game with all melee, all the enemies are zombies, and then all of a sudden you're fighting other people with guns, and you're kind of forced to switch up everything about the way you've been playing and the weapons you've been keeping and using. This could have been okay if the gunplay was a little bit better. For me, it just wasn't polished enough to be leaned on so much of in the back half of the game, and especially heavily leaned on in the last act of the game. The open world itself is pretty large with different areas to explore and work through. The beach where you start, a jungle, city, sewer, a prison. The variety was nice and helped keep things fresh. I originally thought the entire game took place on the beach just outside the hotel, but it's big, it's massive. There are vehicles to help you get around, but the driving is janky bad at best. I tried to avoid it when I could. The fast travel system required you to be at the point to fast travel, which is fine, but I would like the option to do it from anywhere, especially in a game as large and jam-packed with side quests as this one is. Graphically, the game is pretty rough to look at by today's standards, and there was a weird grainy overlay to everything with a lot of motion blur. I looked for ways to turn this off, but I couldn't find any. There were also a good amount of weird glitches that I came across. At times, enemies would disappear or I would just die all of a sudden, just drop dead from nothing. Like, why? walking into an elevator, dead. They weren't constant and consistent enough to stop me from playing or make the game itself unplayable, but they were noticeable, and I kind of hoped with this being a remaster definitive edition that things like this would be cleaned up from the original release. The one regret I do have with my playthrough is not having anybody to do the multiplayer with. This game supports four-player co-op mode for the story, and I think it probably would have been a blast. Maybe with the sequel, it's something I'll get the chance to explore. With all that being said, I think the good stuff outweighs the bad here in terms of overall fun and gameplay experience 
experience I had, they packed a ton into this game and they kind of leave it up to the player to explore and complete as much or as little of it as they want. I'm a big fan of that type of freedom in this style of game. Mix that with campy, funny, cringy, so bad it's good old zombie story experience and we have a bit of a winner here. Three happy potato faces out of five. I would have given it four if it would have given me the option to get rid of the graininess, the grainy overlay and the motion blur. And I also wasn't a big fan of the escort missions and that there were so many within the main storyline. It really slowed things down unnecessarily near the end of the game. Zombie games always have a fine line to walk outside the survival horror genre. At its core, you're essentially repeating the same thing over and over again, killing zombies and lots of them. Good action zombie games give you an interesting variety of ways to do this. Choice and creativity front and center, but there has to be some kind of good narrative or driving force that keeps you interested enough to continue playing through. Dead Island mostly nails all the core fundamentals needed for a fun zombie experience, and I recommend giving this game a go if you like cheesy, corny, awesome zombie stuff. It's pretty gory though, so it's not for kids. Thanks for watching everybody. Be kind to yourselves and others that deserve that kindness. We are on to the next one. I'm a big type. I'm a big type of fan. <laughs> Originally re Originally re released. There's re in terms of overall fun and ex and <laughs> horror genre, the survival horror.